what's going on everybody welcome back to another video and today is fun because we are comparing the iphone 12 pro max versus the black magic pocket 6k here i actually took my zion crane 2s which i'm testing out some of you are still waiting on the 3s video well i'm working on it in comparison with the 2s because they actually just sent this out to me and so i thought it'd be kind of a cool comparison um so i had my Blackmagic Pocket 6K with my Irix uh, 15 millimeter cine lens on it. And then right on top of the camera mounted is the uh, iPhone 12 Pro Max. This little guy right here. As well as, of course, I was using the largest sensor on the Pro Max, which is the, was it 26 millimeter? Basically the main wide angle lens. Now on the Blackmagic, I was shooting in 6K B-RAW. And then for the phone, we were filming in Dolby Vision and we were actually doing it through the Filmic Pro app a handful of days ago, just got the update to support Dolby Vision and the H.265 codec, which is super awesome. So we have the Blackmagic Pocket 6K on the left and the iPhone 12 Pro Max on the right. Now, to be honest, I was incredibly happy with how close some of these shots were. There were some key aspects, which we'll go into a minute, which are the dead giveaways that it's a phone. Now I did go through and color correct all of these clips. If I turn off all effects, so you can see that the iPhone footage looks super weird because it's HDR footage. Uh, and so that had to be transformed in the Pocket 6K footage, obviously is flat B-Raw. Um, I did a transform node where for the input color space and input gamma, basically was the uh, design wide gamma gen four, even though technically we're using gen five, uh, cause that's still in beta. And then we're just using the timeline color space, which is just a regular rec, rec 709. For this guy basically was just um, some corrections to match the iPhone footage. So if we look at our parade scope down here, you can see that this half of the image is the Pocket 6Ks and this is the iPhones. And so with just the transform, it was still a little compressed um, because I mean, it's 12 bit raw footage. You can flex this out thing like crazy. So kind of made them match a little bit better and kind of similarly on the um, iPhone footage here, I simply did a transform from Rec 2100 Gamma 2.4 to a Rec 709 uh, color space. And then basically I used the different uh, HDR tools to correct it back again to match the pocket. And so with that, I created stills for each and applied those to all the footage, just making those minor corrections to um, align the scopes as best I could. So this first shot here was kind of a decent dynamic range test um, because we are shooting inside of a parking garage as well as have the outside. You can see that Pocket 6K here still has all of its information. Again, if we look down at the scopes, which I kind of bring up here, you can see that we have all of that information. I could pull it down even more, but again, I wanted to keep it kind of matched to the iPhones a little bit, but you can see for the iPhone, the highlights are blown because they're the flat line. So all that information is indeed gone. So honestly, this was one of the kind of closest shots. And again, I could go in and match this guy, I could add a gradient and make this a deeper blue. So I actually did away with the mask and just use the primaries. Um, still a little bit different shades of blue. Could spend a lot more time on it, but you get the point that you can go in and match it with the black magic, no problem. Now this shot right here is a good example between the difference between the film cinematic look and the commercial cinematic look. So a film look is actually 
flatter in the scope. So if we look on the left here, this is our black magic. You can see that the highlights and the midtones are a little bit lower than the iPhone footage on the right. And we can see the shadows are a little bit lifted compared to the iPhones. Neither one of these is wrong. And so I could take the black magic footage and if I just increase the contrast, you can see down in the scopes, you can see the highlights start to lift and the shadows going down a bit. And so now you can see I've commercialized the look. Now this shot right here is a great example uh, where phones really start to have issues. Phones like the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra with their bigger sensors start to close the gap a little bit. As I was saying before, phones are great for landscapes because you want everything in focus, but something like this, where I'm just a couple feet away from, whoops, from this tree and these ornaments, you wanna see that kind of fall off, that natural um, depth of field, out of focus look to it. And you can see over in this tree behind um, the main tree that I was focused on, on the iPhone footage, this is out of focus. That is real depth of field. That is not fake or digital or added in post-production. So that's looking really good. Now in the iPhone footage, you start to see a lot of noise, which is definitely on that list of three things the phones don't do all that well, is they have built-in post-processing. And so it's pretty heavy on the denoiser. And yeah, so phones normally are dead giveaways in close-up footage. But to be honest, this tree shot is looking really good on both sides. Now, I really loved this shot on both sides. And again, this really shows the Dolby Vision here. You can see that the clouds in the background are ever so slightly on the overblown side, um, but still pretty respectable. Now, if we look over here on the Pocket 6K, you can see how much detail is kind of in the fence and the chair here. Whereas if we zoom in on the same part for the iPhone, you can see how muddy it is. And again, this is a combination of extremely low bit rates, so less detail in the image, as well as the noise reduction post-processing. If I hit play here, you can see all that noise uh, really just kind of making things muddy. And this whole thing kind of speaks to the difference between the two as well, is how many of you have shot a video on your phone and you're looking at it on your phone and it looks absolutely great. You're like, whoa, this looks just like a camera but then you come over and make it full screen and you start to see all those little details. But nonetheless, uh, this shot, I thought both cameras did extremely well on and out of the camera in terms of a quick grade, I actually really liked the contrast and the colors on the iPhone footage a lot better. Now this shot right here was probably one of the closer ones where I really think you could fool people the only giveaway is again, that kind of ugly noise reduction that you can see going on. But overall, if you had to incorporate this shot with uh, and match it to another camera, I totally think that you would fool absolutely everyone here. The leaves and the trees and just everything looks really good. And our final shot here, another kind of architecture one. Um, again, I think this looks fantastic. I think I even exposed better on the iPhone than I did on the black magic, although again, that data is there so I can pull it down and keep in mind that the shutter speed on these is a little off uh, when shooting directly into the sky here. So it's not that 180 degree rule. Um, and so the shots may look a little jittery. So an ND filter would make this look a lot more natural. And again, off to the right here, I kind of took all those same clips, but made them full screen again. And this is where you can really start to feel the difference between the two. Um, most of these shots still look really good from the iPhone. There is some artifacting going on right here. You can see this branch is almost looking purple. Um, so I don't know if that is kind of the HDR conversion or if that's in the actual footage. Um, I'd have to dive deeper into that. But I'm really curious to hear what you guys think about this. Who do you think won? Should I even ask the question, who do you think won? Because it's kind of unfair. So uh, rather I'd ask the question, are you surprised at how close um, or how far, if that's your opinion, away the iPhone footage is 
from the Pocket 6K and a dedicated, you know, cinema camera. That's it, guys. That is the iPhone 12 Pro Max versus the Pocket 6K. And in just the past month, we've had nearly 4,000 new people crossing over the 20,000 mark. So thank you all so much for that. Again, if you like this video, consider subscribing because we got a lot more cool content to come. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.